this one thing about being conscious. What does it mean to be conscious? And a lot of people, and it seems like a lot of intelligent people, really miss the obvious irony when I hear intelligent people say, in expressing their disgust with so-called pro-black people, so-called conscious people, I hear a lot of people say, see, I can't stand these conscious dudes. I can't stand these conscious motherfuckers. I even heard people say, see, I don't want to be conscious no more. Yeah, back in the day when I was conscious, but I ain't conscious no more. That has to be one of the stupidest things I've ever heard anybody say. And let me explain to you why. We need to have a definition of consciousness and what it means to be conscious. So, so for those who do not know what conscious means, allow me to help you out. For those of you who do know what it means, allow me to remind you. The word conscious or the term consciousness or to be conscious merely means to be aware. That's it. That is all. We're going to have a lot of people, these metaphysicians, these mystics, giving these elaborate, convoluted definitions of what consciousness is. They're going to be invoking astrological star charts and the vibrations of the universe and dark matter and atoms. And s No, it's not that damn difficult. Consciousness merely means to be aware. All right, so I, I, I know I said that this wasn't going to be difficult, but I'm going to make this just a little bit difficult to explain something. Um, think of your consciousness as a circle. Not a perfect circle, but it's a circle. And this little point in the middle of the circle, the little point right there, sort of in the middle of the circle, is your point of inception or the point where you became a sentient being, where your senses, all of them, start to take in information from the environment and you start to process your initial thoughts in relation to or reaction to the information that's coming back to you through your senses regarding the environment. So that's what this point is, the point where you become aware that you are alive. That's the first bit of consciousness right there, the point where you know you're alive. Now, from that point, consciousness kind of grows out from that point. And actually, it's, it's more like a spiral. So you're born, it comes out like this. You're a baby, you're a toddler, two, three, four, five years old. You're having life experiences. Now you're a small child. Now you're going into your teenage years. Now you're going into your adult years. Now you're going into your senior years. And boom, it just goes on and on and on. So that's your consciousness. Now, within this evolution within this travel within this epoch of your uh consciousness you have certain events that go on like um let's see at this point right here you had a really bad injury or you were sick as a child that has an effect on your consciousness right here so when you started making friends um and you started really connecting with people family and friends this is where you start loving people where you start really getting into that, you know, as a small child, um, maybe at this point right here, you were bullied and that had an effect on you. Maybe right here, a parent died, you know, as a child, maybe right here, you were molested or something really bad happened to you. And maybe right here, let's see, let's put it right here. You read a good book that had a profound effect on you. So here's what happens. All the, you know, the good and bad points, we can put all types of points all through. Whatever. You took a trip here. Your dog died here. Uh, <laughs> you, oh, here's one. You fell in love right here, but then right here is where it really hurt. That has a profound effect on a lot of us, on a lot of us. So you have all these instances going on in our lives, these, these huge moments going on in our lives, and it has an imprint on our consciousness. Now, let's take at this point, uh, let's take at this point right here, you get knowledge of self, where you become politically conscious or 
You become, well, in speaking in terms of black folks, you become pro-black or whatever, but you become conscious, you become spiritual, whatever. You ex expand your consciousness into an enlightenment at like this point right here. Now, here's what happens. Your enlightenment right here or your expanded consciousness or your, um, your um, expansion of your knowledge base and your information base, it didn't do anything to dissolve anything here. It did not negate anything here. It did not heal anything here. All these little bad instances beforehand. More often than not, it probably did not. What happens is, you gain your, your knowledge of self here, and then all these experiences are filtered through there, and you carry them on forward. Now, a lot of us try to solve these issues, these these uh, childhood issues, with our consciousness, and but that depends on what type of consciousness you may have. You may have a spiritual consciousness where you have to um, think of things in terms of metaphysical thoughts or, or philosophical or whatever, or mental health thoughts, or, you know, those those type of ideas. So as you go forward carrying this trauma that's maybe not, not resolved, no matter how much knowledge of self you have, no matter how much political or spiritual or economic consciousness or whatever you have, you have not resolved these up here. And now these are added on to here, and you're carrying this forward. Now you're going to this situation in life, and you're approaching this situation in life probably in a problematic way. Now you come to this situation in life probably in a problematic way. And then you come to this situation in life Probably in a problematic way. And a lot of stuff is not getting solved because a lot of stuff was not getting solved back here. You see what I'm saying? This spiral is your consciousness. The journey of your consciousness is basically you. I hope I made that clear. So what we have are people who are very knowledgeable or maybe even geniuses in one area, but they have deficiencies in other areas. And this goes beyond just character flaws. There's a lot of people that are still working through a lot of trauma from their childhood, from growing up, from the teenage years or adult years or whatever. And no amount of sweat lodges, yoga, Ivan Van Sertima books, or Steve Copley lectures is gonna alleviate that. It, it contributes to their contradiction. So what you have is a sister who's a, an awesome social activist, but because of her issues, she can't hold down a healthy relationship. Or you have a brother who's a brilliant political ideological strategist, but he hates black women. Or you get that brother who professes deep spirituality and has a lot of knowledge and metaphysics, but he's arrogant and talks down to people. Or you got that sister who's all about the feminine divine and she's all about sisterhood and she's slaying yoni eggs and talking about reproductive health and all that. But she's a manipulative liar and she's fucking some other woman's husband behind her back. And then you have that with a lot of people. They have not gotten past the trauma in their lives. They may be brilliant in one area. But because of some deficiency or some area that's not developed, some area where they suffer some type of trauma, they suck in another area, or they're not as developed in that, that area. And then we come along and we see those deficiencies. We see that brother who's a sexist. We see that sister who's, who has an anger problem. We see those brothers and sisters with all these different problems, and they drive us away. We want to move away from them. And then what happens is, and this is our fault, well, it's your fault, I don't do this. When we get away from these people, when we point out the hypocrisy of these people, people tend to throw away, I hate cliches, but they throw away the baby with the bathwater. In other words, I'm not fucking with them conscious people no more, so you go off and do something else, not understanding that the ideology didn't fail the people. The people failed the ideology. So now you have a bunch of people who don't want to be whatever no more, don't want to be a black nationalist anymore, don't want to be spiritual anymore, don't want to be Muslim, don't want to be whatever anymore. 
because they equate the ideology to these damaged people. It does not mean that you throw away the ideology. It does not mean that you throw away what could work. And in terms of black nationalism, a lot of people have not seen the irony of pointing out how they're not going to mess with black nationalists anymore and they're done with black nationalism. My point is, how can you be done with something that you never did in the first place? Black people haven't even really tried black nationalism. Not really. So to base black nationalism or any ideology on the failures of the people who are supposed to represent it is the fault of you. Because you don't understand how this strange thing called consciousness works.